Um, good evening to everyone in the region, and um, good morning to our Washington, D.C. Uh, participants. Uh, my name is Nkosnati Mboya, and um, I'll be briefly talking more about this year's theme um, um, for, for the DM, um, why it is important in the region, and uh, the kind of sub-themes that we're hoping that the, um, the proposals that we're um, we called for would uh, fall under. So to start off my presentation, um, the objectives of this year's DM basically is to support, showcase, and learn from innovative household and community level approaches to addressing the problem of child malnutrition uh, through uh, promoting optimal infant and young uh, child nutrition. So in the coming slides, basically, I'll try and um, convince you or why it is important uh, to, to, to deal with um, child malnutrition in the region. So why child uh, nutrition? If we look at the slide, we see uh, that very little has changed in terms of uh, the levels of uh, child undernutrition, both in South Asia as well as in um, some countries in sub-Saharan Africa. This is so despite um, uh, unprecedented economic growth, uh, especially in South Asia. And if we look at India as an example, uh, India has sustained um, one of the world's highest economic growth in the recent times, and yet very little has changed as far as uh, child undernutrition is, is concerned. Um, and if we look at the latest statistics from um, State of the World's Children Report of 2009, uh, we see that on average 45% um, of all South Asian children uh, between uh, one day and uh, five years uh, of age um, are undernourished. Um, this is 17 percentage points higher than what we see in sub-Saharan Africa, as an example. And if we look at India, um, India has the highest uh, number of malnourished children in the world, as, a, as well as the highest percentage mm -hmm. at 46 percent. And in spite of these high levels of undernutrition in South Asia, um, the, the levels mask, uh, mask uh, widening inequalities in, in the different countries and in some uh, subgroups in, um, in, in India, for example, the child malnutrition rates are as high as 56%. Uh, uh, um, and the problem of child malnutrition is not only confined to indicators of underweight and, uh, and stunting. We also, have, we also see a lot of uh, a high prevalence of uh, micronutrient deficiencies. Um, for example, if we look at iron deficiency uh, uh, anemia, uh, IDA, um, in, in this table, we see that um, in, 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 the, in the four countries that I chose for, 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 for this graph, the levels of uh, iron deficiency anemia range between 55 and 81 percent, which is uh, extremely high and um, uh, the highest in the world as, as well. Um, why, should we con why, why is it important to deal with mal uh, child malnutrition? Um, we know what to do, um, and the recent uh, pub Lancet publication of um, uh, early last year uh, listed a, s a number of interventions that have been shown to, to, to be quite effective in all countries and some of them um, in, um, in, s in specific contexts. And if we look at uh, the infants and, child and, and children groups, um, I'm sorry for the small font, um, they list quite a number of interventions that, uh, for which there is sufficient evidence to implement uh, in all countries. And those range from uh, breastfeeding promotion, uh, zinc supplementation in the management of, during management of diarrhea, fortification, hand washing, and other hygiene interventions. So there is sort of some level of consensus amongst nutritionists and uh, other health professionals as to what works for nutrition. But however, we still don't, uh, there's still quite a lot of work that needs to be done as to how to implement uh, um, 
these programs and also how to implement uh, them at scale. So given the nature of uh, the DM, we won't be looking at implementation of these pro pro uh, projects at scale, but we're trying to answer the how question at more at community uh, level. So hopefully the kind of interventions or the kind of pro pro projects that we're going to see uh, during this promotion will, will enable us to, to, to answer the how question. And just to reiterate that um, we are not, we hope, hopefully we, are not conf we won't be confined to nutrition interventions per se. As I mentioned in my last uh, slide, um, we're looking at intervention from other sectors as well. Uh, for example, the water and sanitation for hygiene. And this uh, slide gives another example where um, certain uh, child caring practices are also important and in this case the importance of um, child stimulation um, during the first 24 months of, uh, of life does improve um, in addition to other nu in, uh, nutrition interventions does uh, have a quite a positive impact on, um, on the stunting, stunting rate. And also, I'd like to mention the fact that this is quite, uh, this is a very opportune uh, time for nutrition in the bank and in the development community as a whole. Um, the recent publication uh, from the bank, Repositioning Nutrition, has kind of increased the knowledge and policy development work on nutrition within the bank and in, uh, in the development community as well, as a whole. And the bank has also initiated a, a nutrition initiative to scale up um, its work program in nutrition and hopefully this uh, program will enable countries to respond to the current crisis as well as build up uh, nutrition programs for the medium term in preparation for uh, next crisis um, should, should they arise. So in addition to the ongoing nutrition projects uh, in countries, there is this new initiative which will hopefully increase the uh, ability of the bank to respond to the client's um, needs for nutrition projects. Uh, the f recent food and financial crisis also um, highlight the importance of dealing with child malnutrition. Uh, with the increases in uh, the prices of food um, uh, and the living conditions of the poorest households deteriorating, there is a uh, and there is there has been a uh, uh, reduction in the quality and frequency of meals in many poor households, and that is likely to increase the levels of uh, malnutrition that we are we are, we are seeing in the region and across uh, the globe. Um, why did we choose uh, a, a regional approach to 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 for this DM? I think it, uh, there is ample evidence that the main causes of uh, child malnutrition um, across the region are, are quite similar. And a, as such, um, it is important to foster cross-regional knowledge sharing as well as uh, build networks and partnerships amongst different organizations um, and most importantly the grassroots organizations we, which will be targeting uh, for this DM. So in addition to showcasing some innovative uh, 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 projects to address malnutrition, we we'll also hope to foster this cross-country learning so that we don't reinvent uh, the wheel and we, we make the most of the knowledge that uh, exists in the different countries. And why focus on zero to 24 months? Um, I think there's also consensus amongst the nutrition community that the window of opportunity um, during which we can act and hopefully um, um, prevent future uh, um, uh, malnourishment is quite small. And uh, one day to 24 months has been identified as the ideal period during which we can uh, intervene. And also I'd like to add that um, we're only offering $40,000 for a period of 18 months for, for, for this project. So we wanted to have some focus and uh, focus on, those, on, that, on the target group from which we, for which we expect to see maximum impact uh, of the 40000 So there are many 
um, age groups uh, at which we could have intervened, but given the limitations as well as uh, this small window of opportunity, we, we thought that the 0 to four, 24 months will be the most appropriate age group to act. And also there is ample evidence that if we don't act during this time period, uh, there is irreversible damage to human capital, there is uh, uh, adverse consequences on schooling, there is pot uh, potential reduction in lifetime earnings, and at a macroeconomic level there are also 2 to 3 percent GDP, loss, GDP losses that might result from these high levels of uh, malnutrition. And so what are we looking for? Uh, what were we looking for when we started uh, um, this DM process? Um, we, we had su some sub-themes that we identified as very important for South Asia region. That is based on recent research on what the main causes of uh, malnutrition in the region are and where we, we hope to get uh, the biggest bang for our buck. Uh, I'd like to add that uh, before going through the sub-themes that we are not limiting uh, ourselves to these particular sub-themes, sub but we might see certain projects that we think might have a very good impact on malnutrition. And so uh, we should use these sub-themes uh, to stretch jacket us in, in, in assessing whether this intervention would work or would not. So we need to look at each project uh, uh, on its merits. But when we, when we started uh, this process, we had identified some key uh, areas or sub-themes where we hope to see the maximum impact. The first one is uh, improving access to micronutrient-rich uh, winning or complementary foods. Um, there is uh, evidence in Asia that uh, the winning foods or complementary foods that are given to young ch infants and young children in the region are very low in micronutrient content. So, and that uh, contributes to the high levels of uh, underweight and stunting levels as well as micronutrient deficiencies that we're seeing. So we hope to find some good uh, innovations that will help uh, in increase uh, the micronutrient content of the diets of these infants and young children. Uh, improve hygiene practices and reduce child morbidity. Um, although the most countries in the region, in South Asia, have good access to water, uh, good water sources, uh, there is, sanitation has been a challenge, good sanitation has been a challenge. And so the combination of this poor sanitation and uh, poor hygiene practices has increased the uh, burden of childhood illnesses amongst young children. And given the relationship between uh, illness and uh, malnutrition, this has also contributed to the high levels of malnutrition that we're seeing. So interventions that will be able to address this issue to see how we can promote better hygiene practices for the care of the children and for the preparation of their foods will be, uh, uh, is what we're also hoping to get. Enhanced behavioral change. Um, there are certain practices in the region that uh, uh, contribute to the nutrition problems that, that, that we see. And it is important to change the behaviors of, of caregivers or those uh, people that influence the caregivers, so that uh, these, uh, the caregivers can adopt appropriate infant and young child uh, caring practices or feeding practices. So we're looking for innovative ways of changing behaviors of these um, uh, of caregivers, as well as fathers, for example, or mothers-in-law, uh, who have a strong influence on how the uh, caregivers care for their children. And then improve the status of women uh, in, in the society. I mean, in South Asia region, uh, gender inequalities uh, are well known, and this severely limit the women's ability to to make decisions regarding the care of their children. That is what they should feed their children, when they should feed them, and how they should feed them. So we recognize that empowering women so that they're able to make such decisions is important for child nutrition. And this could be through, uh, for example, microcredit programs or any other women's empowerment um, interventions that could lead to improvements in child care and uh, child nutrition. So I'd like to reiterate, reiterate that although we identified these sub as extremely important, we are open to other 
uh, areas, with innovative interventions that might fall outside of these sub -themes that we think can impact on nutrition. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ngozi. Um, well, I think with